Hi everyone, it's Christine here and welcome to part two of my six and a half by eight and a half mini album using the Proper Gentleman collection from Graphic 45. In part one of my tutorial series, I showed you how to make the book which measures six and a half by eight and a half in the base pocket pages, which measures six by eight. And we did these pocket pages a little bit differently. These will have the large photo mat tag coming out of the top as opposed to the side, just to change things up a little bit. So if you watch part one, you will already have your book done and your base pocket pages done. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I customize these pages to the design that I came up with for this particular album. So let's go ahead and get started. I will have all of the measurements, as always, down in the description box of this video below. Make sure to click the Show More button uh, so you can see all of the information that is typed there. And uh, I think that's it. Let's go ahead and get started. So for page one, and I find it helpful um, just to, in terms of keeping my orientation correct, you want to make sure that you're always working with... Um, the this the opening where it's going to go on the hinge of the book in the correct place so in this case this is going to be my page one so sometimes i'll take a pencil and you guys probably won't be able to see this because it's a pencil on black cardstock but i'll write page one on here and in, just in pencil and this will help me remember that when i'm doing everything on this particular page i need to make sure that the opening is to the left because that's how it's going to attach to the book. Then when I turn it over and do page two, the opening is going to be on the right. So it's a little bit different from when I do the side pockets because we have openings on both sides. This time we only have an opening on one side and we need to make sure that we have that in the correct orientation when we're adding our flaps and flips and pockets. All right, so this album is very simple. In fact, I'm only going to do two of the four pages with you on camera because they all repeat themselves, okay? So this is a great album for a beginner who's never made a mini album before, um, but hopefully it has some ideas for you experienced mini album makers as well. Um, so uh, let's see, to start with, so page one and page two will be different and then they will repeat themselves. The following pages will not be exactly the same, the main components will be but I will be altering up some of the flaps just to suit the cut aparts from this collection. In this Perfect Gentleman collection, we don't have standard cut aparts. They're just different sizes is what I mean by that. Sometimes with Graphic 45 or other paper collections, you'll have cut aparts that are only four by six or three by four. So your flaps are all standardized to those to accommodate those sizes. However, here, this is the page of cut aparts, which you can probably barely see, and I don't have a full one now because I've been playing this album and have cut them all up but they're all different sizes so that will be the only difference as we go through the pages and I will point that out to you as we go through and of course it will be in the description box below in terms of the measurements as well all right so let's go ahead and get started with page one in page one we are going to start with a right flap this right flap is going to measure six and five eighths by eight inches. On the six and five eighths inch side, you're going to score at half an inch and at five eighths of an inch. And that will give you this tiny little gusset. When you score on that half inch and then five eighths inch side, you get this little gusset here. Can you guys see that? It's just this tiny little eighth inch gusset. And what that permits us to do is lay this down on top of our pocket page and it gives us just a little bit of extra space so we can add flaps and pockets and what have you to the base page as well as behind here if we wanted to. To make this little notch, that is entirely optional. I have a um, We Are Memory Keepers envelope maker, and all I did was I put this into the, um, the envelope maker at four inches, which is half the, the length here of this page. And then you press the button down and that makes that little notch. You could also do it with a little circle punch or just leave it plain, completely up to you. I just really like that look. Okay, so once you've cut this piece of cardstock to six and five eighths by eight, you've scored it half an inch and, and five eighths of an inch, you wanna go ahead and fold it over so that just the half inch flap is down. 
uh, and then you want to go ahead and add your score tape. I am using 3 eighths of an inch score tape on all of the construction for these pages today in this video. Um, this is my go-to size when it comes to page construction. You can get this size at scrapandcreate.com and um, in my opinion if you're going to buy one size of score tape this should be it because it is perfect for all of your flaps and all of your pockets and anything you want to add to your pages. Okay, so you want to fold it so just that half inch is um, is showing. So in other words, that gusseted space is now folded along the top of the paper. We're then going to grab our page one, making sure that the opening is on our left. I'm going to turn it just a little bit so I have a better vantage point. And then this is going to be taped down right on top of this pocket page. Okay, so I'm going to remove just a little bit of the score tape. Remember, I have that gusset folded down. Okay, so I'm, I have not pushed the gusset back yet. It's folded flat down, which means that right now this top paper is slightly overlapping the base page. That's okay. That's what's supposed to happen because we haven't pushed on, back on the gusset yet. And I'll show you what I mean in just a moment. I had two strips of score tape on this one, so let me get the rest of the score tape off here or score tape backing, I should say. And then let me just make sure it's nice and even. It is. I'm gonna grab my bone folder and give this a nice burnish. Now see how, if I turn it over, you can see how this flap slightly overlaps right now the base page. That is supposed to be the case because now I'm going to push back on this eighth of an inch gusset. And when I do that and push it back in the correct position, it lines up perfectly with that base page. You guys see that? I know it can be tricky to see. Um, with black cardstock, but um, you'll be able to see it and know what I'm talking about if you're doing this with me. Um, you can't you can't help but 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 notice it once you have it pushed back on that gusset. It now lines up perfectly with the base page. Okay, so that's our, what I call our right flap. Now inside this particular right flap, I have two tiny little flaps. There's a page, and this is only part of what's left, but there's a page in the collection that has all of these awesome vintage cars. So for this particular, and this is what will, will differ between the pages, is these small flaps, because they're all different sizes. So for this particular page, I decided to do two little car flaps, just to add some fun and some interaction to our um, book, okay? So th this will not be repeated, but this main flap will. Hopefully that makes sense and you'll understand better when you click on the show more button and see all of the measurements. Alrighty, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put one of these kind of somewhere here above the little notch and then one below it. Okay, so I have the right flap opened and these little flaps are gonna go right inside here. These measure, by the way, four and one eighth by two. And on the four and an eighth inch side, you're gonna score at half an inch. And again, that's just a custom size for those little car cut aparts. Of course, I have it, I don't use all of them throughout the album. That would be a heck of a lot of flaps and a heck of a lot of magnets to hold them down. But I did think it would be fun to sprinkle a few of them throughout the album. And then of course, on the other side, you could add a photo, you could add a little spot for journaling, whatever you know you wanted to do on the other side of the little flap. I just thought it was a cute idea. The vintage cars are so cool. Um, so beautifully illustrated in this paper collection. Okay, so go ahead and burnish these guys down. So you have these little flaps here. Again, optional, just for a cut apart in the collection. Next thing we wanna do is we wanna add a left flap to the left of our base page. Remember, you want to keep this open. Okay, so don't accidentally adhere anything, you know, inside of here. You want to adhere it right on top, okay? So we have a left flap, and this measures four and three quarters by eight. On the four and three quarter inch side, you're going to score at half an inch. I'm going to turn my page this way so I have a better vantage point, and I'm just going to take a little bit of the score tape backing off here, and then I will go ahead and adhere this to the far left side of our pocket page. I want to make sure I'm even here with the top and the bottom and I'm even going to close this flap 
and make sure that I'm even there, and I am. So now I can tear off the rest of the backing of the score tape and then give this a nice burnish with my bone folder. So, so far what we have is we have this right flap here, these two fun little optional flaps here for some cut aparts, and then this left flap here that opens. And so this is still our base page. And remember, I still have this open to adhere to the hinges when it's time to add these to the book. The last um, part that I'm going to be adding to page one is a pocket onto the base page. And I need to find that. Just give me one second here. Here it is. All right. Here is, there's actually two things we're going to be adding. I apologize. Let's go ahead and do the pocket first. This pocket measures seven inches by three and a half inches. And then you want to score it half an inch on three sides. You then want to turn it over and you'll see it on either edge where those two score lines intersect, you wanna miter the corners. All that means is you just sort of draw an invisible line on the diagonal where the two score lines intersect. And then you just give it a little snip with your scissors and that permits you to have really nice corners on your pocket. Same thing that we did when we were making the cover of our book. Remember we mitered our corners to make a nice corner for our book. You're going to be doing, it's the same idea, okay? So this is just going to go right here, all right, on the base of the pocket page. So I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of the uh, score tape backing off here. Now you want to make sure that you do not go over the score lines. You have a score line here and you have a score line on the left for each of these flaps. So you want to make sure that your pocket doesn't interfere with those. So just, and it will not with the measurements, you just have to uh, look, you know, look at it and make sure you're not going over those score lines. I'm gonna go ahead and take all of the tape off of the pocket and adhere the pocket down completely. And then I'll show you obviously in video number three how we would decorate. But basically if you haven't, I used to do this a different way and I just am showing a different way to do this now. So um, when we decorate, we'll just slide some paper down underneath the pocket so it'll look like a finished piece. But I'll show you that in video number three. All right. And then finally, we are gonna add one more little flap. Again, these little flaps are all optional. Um, and they just correspond with the um, cut aparts from the collection. Um, so I thought it would be fun to add one on the base page as well. And this is going to be another car one. You can, of course, um, you know, vary it up, put different cut aparts than I do, whatever you want to do. It's your album. So the tutorial is just sort of to serve as an idea to get you started. Okay, but this is your album. You do what, what you want to do. I'm just going to flip my page upside down for a moment so I can have a better vantage point. And I'm going to put this... It looks right of center because I'm upside down, but technically it's left of center. So I don't have to worry about centering it too much. And I'm just going to, you know, have it a little left of center right at the top of the base page. Okay, so that's it. That is page number one. Super easy to do. So you've got this flap here, these two here, this large flap here for photos, and then this little flap here and a nice pocket. Okay, so that is page one. Now we will do, I will be using some magnets to hold these flaps down. And I will go over magnet placement at the beginning of part three before we start decorating the pages. So um, you can check that out in part three. If you've watched any of my tutorials, you guys know that I love magnets. I just like everything kept nice and tidy. You do not have to use magnets. You can use other types of closures for your pages, ribbon, etc. But this is a more masculine book, so I'll be using magnets for my closures. Um, I will have some ribbons on my tags that come out of the top. But other than that, and on um, some tags I'm gonna be using inside the album. But other than that, um, yeah, I'm just gonna kinda use magnets for the flips and flaps. And again, I'll show you that in the next video. So now we turn page number one over, and now we're working on the back of it. So this is the first pocket page unit. Remember, we have four of these, and each houses two pages, front one on the front and one on the back. So we've done page one. Remember with that opening to the left, now it's time to do page two. So you flip it over, your opening's now on the right, that's what you want. And now it's time to work on page number two. 
So this is the second design. And remember, as I said, these will all repeat themselves. So once you see how this is done, you can do the entire rest of the book. Again, with just a few exceptions where I added some different size flaps to accommodate the sizes in the paper collection. All right, so this is a super simple album to put together. The first thing that we're going to do is we are going to add a left flap to the far left side of our base page. Again, opening on the right, okay? So this flap measures four and three quarters by eight. On the four and three quarter inch side, you wanna score at half an inch, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna turn my page this way just so I can see better, and I'm just going to line this up and adhere it down on the far left side of this pocket page. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of the score back tape backing off. Um, if you've not seen any of my other videos, this is a really good trick, I think, and I found it works for me, uh, to just remove a little bit of the score tape backing first. It's easier to pick up if you don't set it down perfectly straight. And also, um, it lets you wiggle the other part that has, doesn't have the backing off yet till you get it exactly how you want it. That looks good to me, so I'm gonna go ahead now and burnish with my bone folder. Give that a nice burnish. When you set it down, you just wanna make sure it's even with the top and bottom of your pocket page. Nice and straight. Okay, so there's our flap. Now on the front of the flap, we are going to add a little pocket. This pocket measures five and a quarter by four, and you're gonna score on three sides at half an inch, flip it over and miter those corners like we talked about on page number one. Then this little pocket's gonna go right on top of this left flap. You wanna make sure it goes all the way to the right so it doesn't interfere with the flipping of the flap which sounds funny, but um, yeah, you don't want to interfere with that score line there. So you just want to push it all the way to the left to make sure it's lined up with the bottom and the right side of the flap and everything else will fall into place here. I'm going to go ahead and remove the score tape backing and we're going to remove um, and adhere the pocket entirely down to this left flap like so. Whoops. Okay. So now let's go ahead and open this up and we have the back of the left flap now. And again, this is what will vary from, um, you know, page from the pages to, because I'm just incorporating a little flap for a cut apart. All right, so this is gonna go uh, wherever you want it. If you wanna do the same thing that I did, again, these are optional. This little flap measures three and a quarter by four and on the three and a quarter inch side, you score it half an inch. Again, that sizing is simply because that is the size of one of the cut aparts I wanted to use on this particular page. I am going to go um, up a little bit here. So like up, not quite centered, a little bit north of center and then give it a nice burnish okay and again that is entirely optional now on the base page we have another little flap which again is optional and a pocket let's go ahead and adhere the little flap first remember you don't want to close up this opening so make sure to leave this open Okay, and I'm just going to go ahead and adhere this to the right. Again, I'm going to go almost to the tippy top, about an eighth of an inch down from the tippy top of the page is where I'm just going to put this flap. You put it wherever you want or leave it off completely if you prefer. And then finally, we have a pocket for this base page. The pockets all meant for the base pages are all the same measurements. It's seven by three and a half, and then you score on three sides at half an inch and miter your corners. And so we just want to stick this down right here on the base page, making sure to stay clear of the score line over here for this left flap. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and get this stuck down. And just make sure you're even with the right side of the pocket page and the bottom and then make sure you don't go over the, uh, the score line on the left and interfere with that flap. That all looks good, so we'll give it a nice burnish there along the bottom, and then we'll remove the rest of the score tape so we have adhered this pocket down completely. Okay, there we go. All right, so we are done with page number two. So let's just kind of get a little quick overview. We have this flap with this nice pocket here. You open it up, we have this left flap and this little right flap and then our base page, which has a nice pocket on it. So super simple construction. I'm gonna go ahead and put my sticky and then we can set this aside. We're done with our first base page unit. 
All right, it's time for our second base page unit, which is going to be, like I said, a repeat of the main components. So for page three, again, we're gonna have this, it's gonna mirror page one, okay? It's gonna completely mirror page one, except for a few different size flaps. And again, that's just because the, the cut aparts are not uniform in this paper collection. So grab your second base page unit. And again, this is just like page number one. We have this right flap and it's six and five eighths by eight. On the six and five eighths of an inch side, you score it half an inch and five eighths of an inch to create that little eighth of an inch gusset. Then fold it down so the gusset is along the bottom of your paper. And so all that's showing is that half an inch flap, add your score tape, and then make sure that opening's on the left. Okay, because that's what has to attach to our binding. I'm going to turn my base page this way so I can have a good vantage point, and then I'm going to go ahead and adhere this flap to the right side of this base page. You just want to make sure that it's nice and lined up along the side here. Again, it's going to overlap right now because we haven't pushed back on the gusset. That's okay. That's exactly what you want. Okay, so I've pulled all the score tape backing off. I'm giving it a nice burnish. And now, when I fold back on that eighth of an inch gusset, it lays perfectly on top of our base page, as you can see. Okay? So, again, exactly the same as page one. Also, exactly the same as page one is the left flap that we're going to put right here to the far left of our base page. Remember, do not close up accidentally your opening here. Okay, just like for page one, this left flap measures four and three quarters by eight. On the four and three quarter inch size, you are going to score it half an inch. Okay, and we're gonna go ahead and lay this on the far left side of our pocket page. Remembering again to keep this open um, so it can adhere properly to the binding when it's time to adhere it to the book. So when you lay this down, just make sure you're even here with the top and bottom and that this flap is also even. That looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove my score tape backing and give this a nice burnish. Okay, so now, whoops, little bubble there. Didn't quite burnish that one good enough. Okay. Much better. Okay, so that's what we have so far. So now, um, all, again, all of this was exactly the same as page number one. So the last thing we're gonna do is add our pocket. Again, all, the same as page number one. The pocket measures seven by three and a half, score on three sides at half an inch. So you're just repeating all of the main components on every single page. Page one, three, five, and seven will be the same, at least the main components. And then page two, four, six, and eight will be the same, okay? And again, all of the measurements of everything will be down below in the description box of this video. Okay, so we've got our pocket down, we've got our left flap, we've got our right flap. I wanted to do a little bit of customization on this page with some of the cut aparts, so there will be some different measurements here. Let me just grab my little pile of design paper so I make sure I put the flaps on correctly. I kind of try to plan everything as best I can. Um, so, all right, so this little guy is gonna go on the right here and I'm gonna put it just a little over from the right. So a little, uh, it's still gonna be a little right of center. I'm gonna flip this upside down though so I have a better vantage point. This particular flat for the cut apart that I'm using um, measures uh, four and an eighth by two. And I'm sorry, no it doesn't. That's the wrong, it, I'll just measure it really quick. It measures four and a half by two and three quarters on the four and a half inch side. You wanna score at half an inch. Okay, and again, I'm just gonna place this a little bit to the right of center. It looks left of center right now because I'm upside down so I have a good vantage point. Okay, and then for the left flap, I'm gonna put a little, um, flip as well. This one I'm going to put a little bit down, so a little bit south of center. And this one measures uh, two and um, seven eighths by three and four, three and five eighths. And on the two and seven eighths inch sides, you want to score at half an inch. Again, these measurements are simply because that's what the, the these customized. Uh, 
flaps or cut aparts rather measure. So I didn't come up with these measurements on my own. I just simply cut apart the page of cut aparts and um, yeah, and then that's how we got these particular measurements. Alrighty, okay, so that is page number three. Flip it over now so your opening is on the right and we're gonna do page four, which again will be a repeat of all of the main components of page two. Okay, super easy to do this album, super, super easy. So here we are on page four. So we've got a left flap, remember, that goes up here, a pocket on that left flap, and then the main base page pocket. So those are the main components of page number four. As a reminder, this left flap measures four and three quarters by eight. On the four and three quarter inch sides, you're gonna score it half an inch. Same as page number two. I'm gonna go ahead and adhere this now to the far left of this pocket page. You wanna make sure, of course, that you're nice and even with the top and bottom and along the side. My score tape broke, so let me just get the rest of that backing off there really quick. I find that even though sometimes the score tape will rip like that, it doesn't happen most of the time. And I still prefer doing it that way because I find it so much easier to correct any uh, mistakes. So here's our pocket, just like page two, same measurements, five and a quarter by four. You're gonna score on three sides at half an inch. So I'm gonna go ahead and adhere this down. Remember, you wanna put it to the far right of this flap so you don't interfere with the, um, the flip of the flap, <laughs> the, uh, the score line, okay? So we're just gonna take all of the score tape backing off and adhere our pockets down completely, like so, and like so. Okay, so let's go ahead and varnish those. And then we have to do our base page pocket, which again, same measure, all of the base page pockets, all eight of them are the same measurement, which is seven by three and a half, score on three sides at half an inch, flip it over and miter your corners. And then you wanna put this one to the far right, again, not interfering with this score line here so that this will flip it closed properly, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and remove a little bit of the score tape backing and then just get this nice and lined up along the bottom of our base page. Again, staying clear just inside. You're about a sixteenth of an inch inside of that flap when you use these measurements. That's about where you should be. So you're right up against it, but not so up against it that the flap won't close properly. Hopefully that makes sense. So as you can see now, the flap closes just fine. And I'll add two magnets here to help with that, but it closes just fine. Okay, so the only customization that I did for this particular um, page is I added just again a couple of the little cut aparts. Um, I did I did a couple of the cars. Okay, I did two cars. So I did a left flap and a right flap. So one's gonna go here, and one's gonna go here. And it doesn't matter where you put them. Okay, I'm just gonna put mine kind of. Let me just pull out my really quick just to make sure I didn't have a different intent no I didn't okay yeah so I'm just gonna put this guy like right here and then this one kind of right at the top it doesn't matter you can place them wherever you want and these are just again for that page of cut aparts I just sprinkled a few of these throughout the pages because I thought it was fun totally optional absolutely do not have to do this it would be just fine to leave this decorated just with pattern paper. So here's my left little flap. Again, you're just making sure you're nice and even, like so. And then my right flap, I'm just going to put right at the top here, about an eighth of an inch from the top. So it's going to be a little bit higher than the one on the left. Again, make sure you don't accidentally close up or tape over your opening to your hinge. Okay, all right. So that happens to be page four, super simple. We'll add magnets to keep everything nice and tidy. I'll show you that in the next video. Okay, so those are the two pages. Again, they're exactly the same, but for the little flaps that are customized for the cut aparts. 
I've already gone ahead and done pages five and six off camera because again, it's so repetitive. I didn't want you guys to be bored watching me do the same thing over and over, but I will go over them with you quickly. Page five, and I did these before I put them in the book. So I did them just like I just showed you, okay? So here's page five, we have our right flap. Uh, same measurement, left flap, same measurement. These two are customized for the cut aparts and the left flap measures um, four and three quarters by eight on the four and three quarter inch side, score at half an inch. The right flap, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. That's this left flap. The small left flap, this one, is uh, the only thing that's different from the other main pages and it is five and three eighths by three and a half and on the five and three eighths inch side you score at half an inch this little right flap here is three and a half by five and a half and on the five and a half inch side you score at half an inch so that's the only difference on this page and again all of these measurements are below for page six the main components are all there the left flap with a pocket and then the base page with a pocket. So all I've done is add a few customized flaps uh, that again coordinate with the sizes of the flaps in the paper collection, okay? So this little flap here is three and a quarter by two. You score on the three and a quarter inch side at half an inch. The, um, this flap here is four and a quarter by six and five eighths and you score on the four and a quarter inch side at half an inch. And then this little flap here is um, three and a quarter by two and a quarter on the, I'm sorry, three and a half by two and a quarter on the three and a half inch side you score at half an inch. So again, these are funny sizes, but that's just because that's the size they happen to be when you cut these little cut aparts apart. Page seven, again, we've got the right, left flap and pocket. This one, I didn't add any uh, flaps to it. So it's just the basic design, which you already know how to do. Page eight, we do have the same um, basic design, which is the left flap, the pocket, the base page, and the pocket. And then I just have these two little customizable flaps here. The left one is uh, two and three quarters by three and a half on the two and three quarter inch side score at half an inch. And then the right one is um, two, let's see, three and three quarters by two and a half, and you score on the three and three quarter inch side at half an inch. Okay? Super, super easy. Easy peasy. All right, so now let's go ahead and do the inside front cover and the inside back cover, and then we'll, we will be all done with the um, this video. So this video is the construction of the pages. Super, super easy. Let's start with the inside front cover. And this is just gonna be a little flap and a pocket. The pocket is going to measure seven and a quarter by four. You're gonna score on three sides at half an inch. You are going to um, uh, then want to flip it over and go ahead and miter your corners, okay? So let's go ahead and get this pocketed here down. And what you want to do is just line it up with that inside cover that we put down in video number one when we covered the inside of the chipboard. And it is going to line up perfectly with that cover. And that's how you know you have it exactly in the correct spot. So at all the pages, you're still going to be able to turn, and this pocket's not going to interfere with any of that. Okay. All right, so we've got our pocket all the way down. And then I'm, I'm adding a little flap to this as well. And I'm going to put this flap kind of to the right of center. I'm going to turn it upside down so I have a better vantage point. Now it's going to look left of center because I have it upside down, but I'm just adding this little flap to the top of the cover, okay? So I'm not at the top of the book, I'm at the top of the cover. This little flap, by the way, measures three and three eighths by three and five eighths, and on the three and three eighths inch side, you score at half an inch. So it's a little off center, a little to the right of center, as you can see. For the inside back cover, let's flip back here. Okay, we are going to have a pocket, which is the same size as the pocket we just did for the inside front cover. So it's gonna be uh, seven and a quarter by four. Score on three sides at half an inch, flip it over, miter your corners. You wanna go ahead now and line this up, again, same as we did with the inside front cover, with the cover, the covering that you did on the inside of the chipboard here. 
So you're just going to line it and it's going to line up perfectly with that cardstock. Okay. Go ahead and remove your score tape backing, give it a nice burnish, and we're going to adhere the pocket entirely down. Just like so. Super easy. And then we have a little pocket that I'm going to put, I mean, I, I'm sorry, a little flap that I'm just going to put to the left of center. So I'm going to turn this upside down so I ha have a better vantage point here. And this little flap measures, um, I didn't measure it. Let's measure it. <laughs> I didn't write it down anyway. It measures two and a half by three and three quarters. And on the two and a half inch sides, you want to score it half an inch. Okay. And here we go. I'm going to put it about right here. No right or wrong place to put it. You put it wherever you want. And this is just going to be another one of those little cars from the cut parts. Okay, so that is it, guys. The last step would be to simply adhere your pages to the, uh, to the hinges. As you can see, I already did the last two units, so I will do pages three and four for you just to show you how to do this. It is so easy. It's actually much easier than when you're dealing with um, the normal pocket pages that I do. This is a little bit easier because it just kind of opens for you and you don't have to mess with, you know, openings on both sides. So all I did is I removed just a little bit on the left side of the hinge of the score tape backing Let me make sure I'm on frame here. So hopefully you guys can see this and then I'm going to open this up just a little bit and go ahead and stick this down on the opening here and stick it down right on that score tape. Okay. So now it's time to go ahead. Whoops. My score tape went back on me here. Hold on. There we go. Okay. So I want this to stay off. <laughs> okay. Here we go. All right. So make sure that you are only going as far down as the score tape itself. You do not want to, um, Oops, you do not want to, um, what am I trying to say? You do not want to go all the way down when you're adhering these pages, okay? Because if you go all the way down, uh, then your pages won't turn. So you just want to go to where you have the score tape. And I messed this up a little bit. So as you can see, I accidentally tore my cover page. So I will fix that off camera. So don't worry about that. I will fix it. But let me fix this hinge first. I need to add a little bit of score tape because I accidentally tore it. What happens when you're trying to go fast? So take your time doing this. All right. So I can go ahead and adhere this and then still fix that, that front flap. So, so again, you just want to kind of just clasp it on here. And then make sure that you don't go all the way down. You just go down the length of the score tape. That's all. All right, and then push it down and then fold it this way. And you do the same thing on the other side. So I'm gonna remove this and then I'm gonna lift it up just a little bit. So I make sure it covers that score tape nice and well. All right, and it's nice and on that hinge. So that's how you adhere them to the book. And then you have your openings as I stated, along the top here, right in here. Okay, so that is it for this video. In the next video, I will show you how I decorated this album. Thanks you guys so much for watching and I will catch you in the next video. Bye. -bye.